Hi, it's Jen with Go Collect here with seven segments for you in the weekly recap. Segment one, TV and movie comic speculation from the article Maxing Out Blue Beetle. We will soon be seeing the Blue Beetle on HBO Max and that will probably boost values for a couple of key infinite crisis issues. Although Blue Beetle has been a staple of the animated Young Justice and Batman The Brave and the Bold and has resonated with a younger crowd, he hasn't been featured in live action, so this is a big deal. It also is significant that it will be a series starring a Latino superhero. Blue Beetle could be connected to HBO Max's Green Lantern series, and we could see crossovers between the two. Infinite Crisis number three, Jamie's first appearance. Just two years ago, a standard 9.8 Crisis number three set a record high with a $250 sale. It ended the year with $120 average and remained a hot issue into the spring of 2019, selling for a high of $180 on March 15th. Over the summer, it began to slow down, growing cold by the fall and eventually topping out at $60. It is now coming back to life and has sold five times in January of this year. Infinite Crisis number five. Jamie assumed the mantle of Blue Beetle in Infinite Crisis number five. In this version, the scarab was jolted to life by the wizard Shazam's magical lightning, and it bonded with Jamie in symbiotic fashion. This issue gained popularity in 2018 when the graded 9.8 standard cover averaged $97, and one copy brought $300 that December. It fell off the pace slightly in 2019. So far this year, it hasn't sold for over $80 in three sales, but it should pick up very soon. HBO Max is beefing up its DC Comics property if the Green Lantern and Blue Beetle series are hits. Then this will only be the beginning. Article 2. 81 years in the making, the Blue Beetle. More Blue Beetle. This blog focused on other keys to own besides the Jamie Rees one. Blue Beetle came from the Golden Age. He debuted in 1939 Mystery Men Comics No. 1 and was published by Fox Comics. If you're looking to add Mystery Men Comics number one to your collection, be prepared to take out a loan. The last graded issue sold was a 3.5 that brought $7,800 in 2018. The series never quite caught on and the rights would eventually be picked up by the legendary Charlton Comics. Under the Charlton banner, Garrett handed the Blue Beetle title to his successor, Ted Cord who first appeared in a backup feature in Captain Adam number 83 in 1966. Captain Adam number 83 is a much more budget-friendly option compared to its Golden Age counterpart. An 8.0 sold for $397 earlier this month, and a 5.0 brought $130 in December. Article 3. New Mutants in the MCU. Time to stock up on your keys. There's big news for the X-Men as the oft-maligned New Mutants movie is reportedly part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that has massive implications for the cinematic future. Let the mutant speculation commence. It is intriguing to think that the New Mutants could kick off a new chapter of the Mar Marvel Cinematic Universe and herald the coming of the X-Men. As far as speculation goes, this could set the fires blazing for your New Mutant keys. Marvel Graphic Novel number 4. No question, this is the comic to have when it comes to the New Mutants. Published in 1982, the New Mutants first appeared as part of the Marvel Graphic Novel series. A 9.8 has a 90-day fair market value of $692, and it last sold for almost $800 in December. Magic. Ileana and Storm number 1. Although she first appeared in Giant Size X-Men No. 1 as Ileana Rasputin, she would gain notoriety when she debuted as Magic, and has been a fan favorite ever since. The 9.8 has gra been gradually increasing in value, and it carries a 90-day fair market value of $90. New Mutants No. 14. A 9.8 is currently averaging $216, and the most recent sale was for $255 earlier this month. A 9.6 sold for $109 on January 9th, so look for it to get much more expensive in the near future. New Mutants number 1. This is a landmark premiere to the ongoing series. At a 9.8, it's averaged 
$86 over the past three months, and the last sale was for $61 in January. For those prices, it's worth adding to your collection. New Mutants number 18. This is Demon Bear's full debut. The word is that Demon Bear will play a big part in the New Mutants movie, and that will give this issue a boost once the world gets a look at him. The only grade that has seen any significant changes in value is the 9.8. After averaging $91 in 2019, it has a 90-day fair market value of $107, which is still less than its 2018 year-end value, but it's on the way up all the same. Segment 2, Undervalued Comics in 2020. From the article, Undervalued Comics in Early 2020. Comic speculation in 2020 is a tough game to play. With the proliferation of information available through any number of websites, apps, sales data trackers, etc., it is next to impossible to gain an edge when considering what books will pop in the near future. One such case is Shang-Chi. Even the most hardcore comic news fan had much reason to believe that Disney was planning on a Shang-Chi movie before rumors started leaking in early spring 2019. In the spring, CGC 9.0 copies of Marvel Special Edition number 15, the first appearance, were selling as low as $450 to $500. By the end of July, when it became clear Shang-Chi would be announced in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, CGC 9.0 copies were selling for $1,000 to $1,200. Here are three ideas of books that could make a resurgence in the months and years to come. Marvel premiere number 47, lost in all the hype of the new MCU entrances, is Scott Lang's Ant-Man. You have to run down the list of firsts before you can get to Marvel premiere number 47, which likely keeps it under the radar. It's not the first appearance of Ant-Man, but Marvel premiere number 47 is the first appearance of Scott Lang as Ant-Man and first appearance of Cassie Lang, his daughter. Copies in a 9.8 have begun to sell under $500 in the past five months, and a 9.6 slabs have sold for under $200 for registered time since August. Is it a coincidence that this was the time frame of D23 and the huge Marvel announcements? When Ant-Man was not mentioned, did the price begin to crater? Perhaps, and that means now is the time to act. Submariner number 35. As long as we're talking underrated, I have to mention the Defenders. This group represents some of the most sustainable and timeless characters in Marvel history. The origin of the team is overlooked. Just over 200 copies exist on the census, with the majority falling in the low 9 to 8.0 range. Based on recent sales data, a copy in the 9.0 to 9.4 range should not cost more than $200, with prices plummeting down below $100, if you are happy with an 8.0 to 8.5. Brave and the Bold, number 54, the first appearance of the Teen Titans. We are soon moving into the third season of Titans, and there is an established history of the Teen Titans Go animated series. But this book hasn't moved the needle in some time. Every grade of this book, from 9.2 to 2.5, except for 7.5, has a downward trend in sales price over the last two years. The two most recent sales in that grade have been $736 and $660. If this group can ever push its way back to the front and center of the DC Universe, I would expect this issue and Brave and the Bold number 60, the first time the team name is used, to shoot back up into a four-figure price tag for all copies 8.0 and above. Segment 3. Character Speculation. From the article, Herbie, the next Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda is all the rave right now, and Star Wars is the king of making characters and marketing them. Marvel has had a baby Groot, but they have not spent much time trying to push ancillary characters in the style of Disney. One blogger is starting the petition for Marvel to put Herbie on the big screen. Humanoid Experimental Robot B-Type Integrated Electronics, or Herbie, was initially conceived as a cartoon character to help make the Fantastic Four animated show more kid-friendly. 
His character ultimately made its comic book debut in Fantastic Four number 209 in 1979. Herbie would be on-screen gold for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We are all expecting the Fantastic Four to make some sort of appearance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Previous movies of the Fantastic Four characters have been stuffy and uninsp uninspired, so now is the time to throw a robot into the mix. Marvel needs to take action with their upcoming slate of movies and start filling them up with the characters that we love. Who is the character that you feel is missing from the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Could Herbie be the answer to the Galactus setup? Segment 4, Modern Age. From the article, Modern Age Comic Book Novelty. A fun part of comic collecting is the crazy, crazy modern age comics with novelty covers. There have been trading cards inserted into comics, glow-in-the-dark covers, foil embossed covers, even wacky comics with bullet holes shot through the center. What are some of these interesting novelty books that we might invest in? Ghost Rider number 15, House of Ideas' first glow-in-the-dark cover. A long-term grade 9.8 had a last sale of $69.99 on January 13, 2020, returning positive of 27.5%. The second print also had some solid numbers. Long-term grade 9.8 had a last sale of $89 on August 12, 2019, returning positive 57%. Silver Surfer number 50, the first silver foil embossed cardstock cover. The long-term grade 9.8 had a last sale of $60 on November 22, 2019, returning a negative of 1.2%. Jab number three, every issue was shot through the center with a .22 caliber bullet. Unfortunately, there is no sales data on this issue. Segment five, long short comic report. From the article, 10 comic picks for the next 10 years. In the long short comic report, we look at 10 comic books that are speculated to gain value over the next 10 years. They include Avengers number 48, Kit Harrington from Game of Thrones will be playing the Black Knight. Only 500 graded copies are on GoCollect. Deadpool number one. The character is widely popular, and there are just over 1,800 graded copies of this book on GoCollect. Venom number three, third printing. There is nothing wrong with the first printing. It is a must-have book. But the third printing, with Null on the cover, could have legs similar to Captain Marvel number 17's second printing. It's rather scarce, with just over 200 graded copies. Amazing Spider-Man number 194, Black Cat's first appearance, doesn't nearly get the credit it deserves. This book in mid-grade is cheap. Given the black cover, higher grades are tough to come by. Ultimate Fallout number 4. This is the type of book you will want to hold on to long term. The 1.25 Marco Djevric variant is, in any condition, is getting harder and harder to find. Edge of Spider-Verse, number two. It has long-term appreciation potential. Spider-Gwen has massive appeal for both men and women. This book currently goes for about $200 raw. Howard the Duck, number one. The 1.25 Ron Lim variant. This book is just a few years old and is getting very hard to find for less than $200 raw. All new Marvel Now, point one, number one. Kamala Khan's first full appearance. Khan should be a huge player in both, both Marvel comics and movies over the next decade. Amazing Fantasy number 15. The first appearance of Amadeus Cho. Cho seems like a super important, important character for Marvel and has all the makings of a key player for the big screen. This book also is in short supply in high grade. The Go Collect database has a total of 345 copies listed. Young Avengers number one. The new Hawkeye is sure to be a cornerstone character in the comics and movies for the next generation. Kate Bishop will be the focal point of the Young Avengers team in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Young Avengers are going to happen in the MCU. That said, the team almost certainly won't be the same team as is in this book, though. Segment 6, Sleeper Picks for 2020. From the article, 2020's Sleeper Picks, 
Iron Man 24 and God of Thunder 19. Keep your eyes on Iron Man number 24 and Thor God of Thunder number 19. Here's why. As we mentioned last, last week, Christian Bale could be the voice of Beta Ray Bill, or he could suit up as a villain in the latest Thor movie. Iron Man number 24 is a true sleeper pick. Only the 9.8 and 9.6 sell for over $150, and neither of those grades has traded hands since 2013. Last year, a 9.4 sold for $128 on January 24th, tying it with a 2005 sale for its peak value. A 7.0 sold for just $20 earlier this month. This is a great indicator for the state of the market, at least for the low and mid grades. If a 7.0 is only bringing $20, then you can get a low grade for practically change. Thor, God of Thunder, number 19, another sleeper. Thor, God of Thunder, number 19, may not be the first appearance of Minotaur, but it is Agar's premiere. The best part is that it is dirt cheap at the moment. There haven't been any graded sales since the 9.8s averaged $20 in August 2017, and that includes two variant covers. If Bale does get announced for the role of Agar, this will be a white-hot issue in no time. Segment 7. Reader Requested. From the article, Will the Real Dark Side Stand Up? Taking a look at Dark Side. Dark Side was ranked number 6 on IGN's Top 100 Comic Book Villains of All Time and number 23 on Wizards' 100 Greatest Villains of All Time. One blogger reviewed Forever People number 1, one of the books of Darkseid's first appearance, and received reader feedback that the market prefers Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, number 134, over Forever People, number 1. A review of said book was promised and published this week. Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, number 134, was created in November 1970, about three months prior to his first full appearance in Forever People, number 1. Darkseid is power personified with superhuman strength, speed, stamina, durability, agility, and longevity. Long-term grade 9.8 had a last sale of $9,300 on November 29, 2018, returning positive $197. Short-term grade 9.2 had a last sale of $900 on December 15, 2019, returning negative 14.3%. The reader, James G., that believes this book is more expensive than the first full appearance, is correct. <laughs> That's all, folks! <laughs>